Hello, everyone. Um, this is an addition to the previously posted functional programming lecture. I thought it'd be a good idea to go over the call stack briefly. The call stack is how a program manages all the different functions that it's called and how they relate to one another. So one thing to understand is the function contexts. So the context contains all the variables associated with a particular function call and their values. So even if a function has uh, the same name, different calls to that function will have different contexts containing different arguments and return values and other data. Let's use our um, integer multiply example uh, to go through this and see what it looks like. All right, so here's our recursive multiplier. It just multiplies values between start and end, integer values between start and end. You can see it's a recursive program here. Here's the recursive step. Here's the base case. The base case is just when there's a single value in the um, list to multiply. So when end and start are equal, there's only one value to deal with, and all we have to do is return that value. The recursive step takes care of everything else. It takes care of all the multiplication operations. All right, so let's look at an example. Um, if we call recmult on integers 3 and 5, let's see what happens. All right, so this is a stack frame. This is the context for a particular call. So here we have recmult with 3 and 5. We replace all the instances of end and start with 3 and 5. And we get to this recursive call here because 3 is not equal to 5, so we execute the else block. That makes another call, which creates another context for um, recmult, this time containing 4 and 5 as the start and end values. And so on. So here is the next recursive call. So you see we're adding one to each of the arguments as they get passed into the new function. But this time 5 is equal to 5, and so we execute this return block. We return the we execute the base case. So the recursive step is not executed here, just the trivial base case, which is the smallest instance of the problem possible. That returns 5, replaces 5 here in the calling context, replaces the, um, the recmult 5, 5 call with just the value 5, and so on. So now 4 times 5, this returns and replaces where it was called in the function sort of above it. And finally, that function performs 3 times 20 and replaces where it was called at the very top level with 60. All right, so I hope that sort of explains how functions relate to each other. They create a new context at each call, which can have different values. That's how in functional programming, we modify variables. We don't really just say x equals a new value. We pass that new value back through a return statement to wherever we were called in the previous function. All right, I'm going to stop there. Bye-bye.